Praise the Lord, White Hill. I said, praise the Lord, White Hill. Yeah, y'all come on in. Come on in. We want to give God some praise this morning, y'all. Today is a good day. We're talking about Palm Sunday where a celebration was going on. Not only a celebration for Palm Sunday, but we got baptism this morning. Come on, y'all clap. Yeah. It's an exciting time this morning because the Bible said that the angels rejoice over one. But this morning, I believe we got over a dozen. Huh? Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on. That's a testament that the blood still works. That God is still moving. Yeah, we want to thank God this morning for that. So I want the atmosphere to be, hey, listen, this is a celebration. Oh, I want them to remember when they went down in the water that the church was celebrating with me. Today is a new day for them. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. This morning we're reading our scripture coming out of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Do y'all remember when you went in the water? Come on now. Come on now. The joy of going in the water and coming back up, knowing that you had made a confession of your faith. Let's celebrate them this morning, y'all. from our homes kept us protected around our home not on our home but our children our loved ones and our friends and people across the world have to recognize that God is alive he's alive and he's well let's praise the Lord in the name of Jesus pray of thy servant amen
indeed it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we certainly, we thank God for the, another privilege of being able to fulfill one of the orders of the church, and that is water baptism. And so we're thankful this morning. Amen, amen. I, I shouldn't have to prime push a level of excitement that ought to be in this building because of what the Lord is allowing us to do this morning. As has been mentioned that we have 12 that we're going to take down into the water this morning. 12, amen, 12 to take down into the water. And we're grateful that what God has done thus far, see the port, we've, we've baptized over 31 already this year, 31 to be baptized, amen. We want to double the amount that we baptized on last year. We're only 10 away from last year. And so we want to praise God for what he's doing. Amen. Praise God for what he's doing. Praise God for what he's doing. Praise God for what he is doing in this place, on this spot of ground. Amen. And so we're thankful for God. Amen. And so, Kelton, amen. We got a little Kelton. Help him on in here. Amen. Come on, Kelton. And all those who are here to support Kelton this morning, not yet, amen, not yet, amen. Kelton, do you believe, if you're part of Kelton's family and you're here to support him today, would you please stand? We just want to recognize you, amen, amen, if you're here today, amen. Well, we're grateful, we're grateful. Kelton, amen, amen, appreciate that. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes. Amen. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Kelton, in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Jay Sean, all those are part of Jay Sean's family. If you're here to support him today, will you please stand? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all can let him in. Let him in. Let him back to amen. Amen. Jay Sean, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? That he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sin? Yes, sir. Amen. head of the church. Upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Jay Sean, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mackenzie, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? I do. All right, all right. All those are part of Mackenzie who there to support her. If you would, please stand. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Mackenzie, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. We serve a wonderful God, don't we serve a wonderful God? You want to take your Macabre, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen, amen. All those who support Macabre, if you want to stand, will you please stand? In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Makairi, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost.
And we have Sarah here. All those here to support Sarah this morning, will you please stand? Amen. We're grateful. Amen. Sarah, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Sarah, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We have Kyra here. Amen. I remember when she was born. All right. All those here to, be, to support Kyra this morning, would you please stand? If you're part of her family, you're here to support her. Amen. All right. Okay. Kylie. All right. Kylie. That's, I'm like, what am I saying? I know that one right. Kylie. All right. Kylie? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. All right. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you kindly in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Demaria, all those are part of Demaria's family. Would you please stand? If you're here to support her, please stand. Amen. Demaria, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in a grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Demaria, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's bless God in this house. Amen. It, this can't get ordinary. It can't get plain. We're excited. We're excited. We're excited about what God is doing and how he is yet blessing and how he's doing what he's doing and how he's done what he's done. I get overjoyed when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that is already done for me that how he's blessed and how he's using us as a church to lead folks to Christ, how he's using us as a church to snatch people away from the depths of hell has he using us as a church that someone can cry i once was lost but now i'm found do you remember the day that you met the lord do you remember the day that he set you free do you remember the day when you were able to give an outward sign of an inward change what a change has come over us Jamari, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen, amen, amen. I remember when this baby was born, too. Amen. In obedience, in the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Jamari, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Tania, all those are part of Tania's family. Would you please stand? If you're here to support her, will you please stand? Amen. Tania, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? 
that he died on the cross, was buried in a grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen. That's a good news. That's good news, y'all. That's, that's good news. That's, that's good news. That's good news. That's good news. Obedience to the great head of the church. Upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you to Nia in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sin? Yes. Amen. Amen. To the great head of the church, upon the confession of faith, I indeed baptize you, Amina, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. The reason I'm doing this, this is a father and son that's getting baptized together. Amen. A father and son. Amen. That's that's a unique opportunity. Amen. That how powerful that is. And so I want them to be in the water at the same time. Amen. We're gonna baptize them one at a time, but I want them to be in the water at at the same time. What a memorable moment. What an opportunity. What a glorious opportunity. What a glorious opportunity to be able to take father and son. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start with Cassidy, the father first. Amen. And let the son come second. Amen. Amen. Cassidy, you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen, 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 amen. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Cassidy, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Bless you, God. Oh, I'm getting excited again in the pool. Amen. It's just wonderful when you think of what God is doing. Y'all y'all just surprised me. We get excited about March Madness, basketball, somebody shooting through the hoop. But lives are being changed. People are being changed. And we're grateful to God to experience some unusual thing. Let those folk come in. Let them come in. Let them witness it. Let them come in. We're going to celebrate while everybody come in. We're going to celebrate while the rest. Come on, 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 come on. I don't know what you, this is Palm Sunday. This is the day that we celebrated our King of King and our Lord of Lords who came to die to set us all free. Glory to his name. Yeah, yeah. Anybody know he's worthy? Yes, he is. Yes. Anybody know he's worthy? Yeah. Anybody know he's worthy? Yeah. Do you really know that he's, he's worthy? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jeremiah. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross, was buried in grave, rose on the third day for your sins? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. In obedience to the great head of the church, upon the confession of your faith, I indeed baptize you, Jeremiah, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
There's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the same thing for you. He's still delivering. He's still setting free. He's still saving souls. And I'm grateful. 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 And I'm thankful. And I'm happy. And I'm joyful. And I'm I'm glad about what God is doing. Yes, sir. Twelve. Amen. Yeah. The number of disciples. Twelve. Yeah. The number of the tribe of Israel. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve gates in the city. Twelve. Yeah. We know that God is divinely moving in this building and that he allows us to see what we're able to see and be a part of what you're being a part of. If you can't get excited about folk getting baptized, then the song don't mean nothing. If you can't get excited about people getting baptized, baptized, then them prayers don't mean nothing. It ought to mean something because that's the reason that we are here to exist as believers. He, see, he said, go ye therefore and do what? Baptize. And we thank God that he allowed us to fulfill that order. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you. We thank you right now. Yes. Oh, we glorify your name, God, yes. for what you've allowed our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts being able to feel. Bless right now, God, yes. all these who we've taken down in the water. Yes, those who have said that ours an inward change have taken place, and baptism is that outward sign of their change. Now God, I pray that you will cover their lives, keep them from the hands of the enemy. Yes, oh God, I pray that when they come in and when they go out, I pray that you bless them yes. in the city, bless them in the fields, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. bless them and keep them out of harm's way. Then use them to be a beacon of light to draw others to you, God. Help us as a congregation to allow them to have opportunity to exercise the gift that you've placed inside of them. Yeah. Let God, I pray that they grow in your knowledge and I pray that they grow in your grace. Yeah. Now, God, as we go high in this service, Lord, let us now be able to right now to celebrate even before anything else is done, God. Yeah. Take us higher and higher in your name. Yeah. We ask all of this in the mighty, precious, and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. God bless you. Good morning, White right Hill. Come on, give these uh, new converts another hand. Come on. I want y'all to, to just help me sing one round of this old song. Will y'all sing just a piece of this with me? There is power, power. Wonder-working power in the blood. Y'all sing it with me now. Of the Lamb, there is power, power. Wonder-working power in the If you can let your mind roam back to when you found Jesus and just put your hands together. If you know it, sing it with me. If you don't know it, it's easy to learn. Song says, Oh, the joy that came to me. Clap your hands. When I knew I was free. When my Savior found me, he wrapped his arms around. Yeah. 
Clap your hands. 
will meet today following service in room 102 with parents concerning the after-school tutoring program. Faithful Expressions, our liturgical dance ministry, will practice today and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. with young ladies ages 5 to 19. Please see Sanithia Tate for more information. Blueprint small group session is today at 6 o'clock p.m. via Zoom with young adults ages 26 to 45. Please join in with topics centered around our faith. Look for the Zoom information on our social media platforms. Awana Clubs will have their Easter celebration on Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. with Silly Socks and Spaghetti Night. Children will be served a spaghetti dinner and are welcome to wear their favorite Silly Socks. Join us Good Friday at 6.30 p.m. for an incredible Easter production, Believe. This is free and open to the public. On Saturday, we will have our annual Easter egg hunt at Skate Zone of Tupelo beginning at 9.30 a.m. There will be games and prizes, refreshments, egg hunting, and skating. The cost is $5 per child, and today is the deadline to sign up and pay the cost. Please stop by the table in the foyer. Celebrate the triumphant victory of our risen Savior on Resurrection Sunday. The worship service will begin at 9 o'clock a.m. Make plans to attend the gospel singing on Resurrection Sunday at Restoration Worship Center here in Tupelo beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. Featured on program is Doc McKenzie and the highlights, the spiritual messengers, and more. Tickets are $20 in advance and $25 at the door. For ticket information, please see Fred Cook or Charles Golden. White Hills Condolence Ministry will host a grief share session on Saturday, April 6th at 10 o'clock a.m. This year's theme is The Song Has Ended, But The Melody Lingers On. Grief Share provides help and encouragement after losing a loved one. If you are experiencing grief, we hope you will join us. Woman to Woman's next meeting will be Monday, April 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. And all ladies are invited to join us for a night of power and praise. There will be a panel discussion as well as a special skit presentation. We will conclude with the meal 
in which we are asking for a $5 donation. Please sign up and pay your donation by March 31st with Sister Shannon Daniel or Sister Latoya Gibbs. We would like to recognize all of our 2024 high school and college graduates on Sunday, May 19th. If you are graduating from high school or college, please sign up in the church office and pick up an application with guidelines and other important information. All information must be submitted by April 14th. Be a part of our next baby dedication service taking place on Sunday, April 14th during the morning worship service for children zero to three years of age. If you would like to have your child dedicated, please register in the church office today. The Sunday School Ministry will host the Plan of Salvation Workshop on Saturday, April 20th, beginning at 9.30 a.m. There will be separate sessions for both adults and youth starting at eight years old. This year's speaker will be Dr. Brian Carmichael, the Director of Accelerated Urban Pastoral Ministries Program at the Memphis College of Urban and Theological Studies. This is free and open to the public. However, registration is required by April 10th. Stop by the Sunday School Ministries table in the foyer to register. There are many scholarship opportunities available for 2024 graduating high school students. Pick up a form today in the church office for the Big Mike Smooth Scholarship, the Deacon George Scholarship, Woman to Woman Myrna Lauderdale Giving Scholarship, and Woman to Woman Scholarship honoring Eartha Bradley. The deadline to apply is approaching soon. The Marriage Ministry's next event will be held Saturday, April 27th. Battle of the Couples. More information coming soon. Amen, amen. Come on, y'all, let's give the male chorus another hand. Minister Josh Miles is ushering us on in. It's still time to be joyous now, y'all. It's time for offering, amen? Amen, amen. All right, as you prepare your hearts and your minds to give, um, those that are watching, you can be mindful in the ways that you can give as well. Just take 77977 to White Hill and you are able to give and participate. Y'all come on, let's get up on our feet. Let's get excited about giving. Does anybody in here know that God will bless you beyond what you give? Are there any testimonies in here that can say, I've tried him? The so words say, taste and see that he truly is good. Amen, amen. We'll give you a few moments to get yourself together. As you prepare your gifts, y'all, let's just be mindful that things are going on all over the world, but when God gives you an opportunity and he's blessed you to give, you ought to give, as the Bible say, with a cheerful heart. Don't, don't give it if you, you got an ugly face now. Don't, don't give it like that. Pray and ask him to give you a cheerful heart so you can give in a way that, that excites him as well. Amen? Amen. Come on, let us stand all over the building if you're able to stand. And then we'll turn you into the hands of our ushers.
Let us pray. Father God, we do just want to thank you this morning. Lord, we thank you, oh Father God, for what you've allowed to transpire already on this morning. Lord, we're grateful, oh Father God, just for the love, oh Father God, that you've shown us this morning. Now, Father, we pray, oh Father God, for those that were able to give this morning. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us in a way, oh Father God, that we can participate in being cheerful givers, bringing our tithes and our offering into the storehouse, oh God. Now, Lord, we ask, oh Father, that you will bless it, Lord, that you will bless it to the upbuilding of thine kingdom. Bless those that had a desire to give but did not have. Bless those that gave, Father God. We ask that you would do all these things. In your son Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The drama team, we turn y'all over into the hands of the drummer. Good morning. Good morning. I got to catch my breath after all of those baptisms this morning. <laughs> I had to do my bush push ups and everything. We're ready. Like I said, good morning to everyone. Uh, the drama ministry will be presenting our annual Easter production this Friday, 6 30. We invite everyone to come out and participate and be a part of it. Um, the way cast has been working very, very hard. Uh, we've had, uh, been having three practices a week. And so they've worked with very, very hard. So um, we ask you to please come out and support them. Uh, and also support our ministry, finance ministry, the drama ministry. So this morning we have a preview, you know, when you go to the movie, there's always a little preview they put out beforehand mm -hmm. yeah. to kind of promote. So this morning we have a couple of our uh, cast members that are going to perform a couple of scenes. I'm not going to tell you everything. I want you to come out and, and see the rest of it. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to our servants. told you not to keep tasting that wine. But no, you wouldn't listen to me. You said there were going to be plenty for everyone. And now it's all run out and it's all your fault. The master of the feast is going to be furious with you when I tell him what you have done. Hmm? You better not go running to the master making such accusations. Don't act so innocent. I saw you sneaking a jug for yourself. Who? Me? Yeah. I am a member of the White Hill Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> I am under the leadership of Jeffrey B. Born Again Daniel. Yes. I would never do such a thing. You must have seen someone else. No! I tell you what we need to do. What? what? Sweep around our own front door. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 That's just a snippet. That's just a snippet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now we have an, our men come. What are we accomplishing here? Just what are we accomplishing here? Here's this man for many signs and miracles. If we let him go on like this, the people, the Romans, they'll take away our land and our nation. They'll take away our temple. And I'll work too hard for this, and I just can't have it. It's better for one man to die for the people than for an entire nation to perish. We need to arrest him soon. I mean, as soon as possible. I have an idea. Okay, talk to me. I suppose Jesus will be at the Passover. Yeah, he'll be there. We can find and confront him there. Okay. Question him. Cause him to blaspheme in front of the people. Yeah, I like that. Then have him arrested. Hmm. 
That sounds like a good idea. But he has so many devoted followers. Yes. We may yes. need to have him arrested privately. You thinking now? If you thinking? We can, if we can get one of his closest friends well, I like to help thinking. us find him during the night. See, I knew you had it in you. Then we I could knew avoid, you had it in you. We could avoid that angry mob. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be thinking about that. You thinking now? I knew you had it. We're gonna get him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's give it up for those. And again, they have been working so very hard. And, and if you are part of the production, please stand. Please stand if you're here. Please stand so we can give everyone, everyone let to see who you are. Again, like my wife said, you all have been working so hard for six weeks. We thank you so much for your dedication and sacrifice. But Friday night, please come back out and support the cast, but also support the ministry because we know the reason why we celebrate Easter. Amen. Our risen Savior. And our drama ministry, we're going to present Jesus coming from the beginning to the end. So we want you to come out and enjoy. Thank you all very much. what he did for you on Calvary. Come on and just give him a praise in this building. If you know he's been good. Little song that just speaks to that says these words. say thank you oh lord i want to say thank you oh lord i want to say thank you thank you for all you for all, all you've done, you've done for me. Can I say it again?
that you are able to see this day. And you can thank you back over your life to a time that you thought you wasn't going to make it, to a time that you know you shouldn't have made it. And you know that it was nobody but Jesus that reached down and picked you up from where you were. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you to lift your hand. I dare you to give him a praise in the building. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. Somebody ought to shout out. blessed we're blessed beyond what we deserve we're better than blessed if you made it through another week of ups and downs toils and snares if the enemy tried to beat you up all week long and almost convinced to tell you you need to stay at the house and not come to the house of the Lord. But aren't you glad in spite of all that you've been through, you still have joy. The word said the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's not constituted upon what I got in my pocket. It doesn't matter about what kind of car I drive, but what matter is is that he saved me one day. And because he saved me one day, he changed me one day. And because he changed me, then I don't let the problems of this world get me down. I still have joy. Anybody got that joy? Anybody got that joy? We're thankful to God. For this Palm Sunday, we thank him for what we have been able to experience here on this spot of ground. Thank God for these men who've been singing all month long. 
We appreciating them doing a combo meal for us this morning with Minister Josh Miles. And thank God for him, amen, and his ministry. And uh, yet he let God use him all around the country, being able to bless folks in song and even blessing us to break up that fallible ground that the seed of the word might be, might be planted. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Father God, we thank you. And we thank you over and over again for just how good you are and how gracious you have been. That you've given us brand new mercies, kept us from seen and unseen danger, been right there by our side. And Lord, we just can't thank you enough. God, we thank you for air to breathe, legs to walk with, and a tongue to talk with. Thank you, God, that we don't need somebody to help aid us around. But you allowed us to walk on our own accord. And for this, we do thank you. Oh, God, we lift you up today as we reflect and as we remember what you did through that day that you came into Jerusalem. And so, God, symbolically, we praise you for what you did 2,000 years ago. And so, God, we come as empty pitchers before a full fountain, asking that you will pour over into us right now. God, we don't have to ask you to come. We know that you're already here because we can feel you moving right now. God, help us to be better for you. Let us be that light that you told us we need to be. In order for us to do that, God, we ask that you would help us by cleansing us of all of our sins and unrighteousness. God, forgive us right now for all of our shortcomings and help us, Lord, to lead others through example. God, we lift up every name that's recorded on our prayer list. And even now, our hearts are concerned about Brother Willie Riley, God. We pray for him right now that you would touch. We don't know all that's going on, but we know you're able. We pray for Demetri Cunningham, and we believe in miracles because you are still a miracle-working God. And so be with Billy and the entire family right now. Brother Harmon and Sister Harmon, as they become support to their sister and sister-in-law, God. God, I pray for Carrington Buck and Tanya Sanders and Dorothy Silas and Billy Wayne Stovall and Teronica Dixon. And God, we lift up Milton Clay Sr. And thank God for Sam Patton and your healing and Jackie Davis and all, God. We lift them up to you. And and God, we believe, Father, that you are a healer and you are a deliverer. We know you can, God, and we believe that you will because you can do what no other power can do. And so we lift up Christina Diggs right now as well. Oh, God, help right now, Father. Whatever it is they need to have done, we lift up Josiah Orange and Joseph Orange right now, God. God, we know that you can, and we know an upcoming surgery, Lord. So be with doctors and nurses even now as they prepare. Heal Jackie Davis right now. and Touch Wanda Adams right now, God. Oh, God, we know you can. And we trust, Lord, that you will do right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort all those in need of comfort right now who have lost loved ones. Strengthen them as they deal with the loss of loved ones. Oh God, we pray for anyone that's in our congregation that don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Lord, we pray, God, that you will help them to know you today. That they can come crying, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Be a healer all over the building and all over the country, Lord. 
touch those on foreign soil. God, we pray now, God, that you will help us to go in your word. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. To preach as never preached before. Use us in whatever way you see fit. And God, I pray that even if we didn't call names out, you know every name. And you know every need. Now, God, we ask that you allow the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart to be acceptable in thy sight. For you are strength and redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And we thank God for each of you. And, and certainly we appreciate all these preachers who are present. We're Warren, we're Williams, uh, Pastor Gibbs, to Reverend Miles, to officers of this church and to sister daniel our first lady we do thank god for you all of our visitors sharing with us we do appreciate the house being full today amen it's just good to be here amen and we thank god for last week last week for you going out with us yesterday uh, sunday evening last sunday evening rather over to new lebanon i appreciate those who follow us including the mail course what a wonderful wonderful time we had over over there. Let me say this and get right into the message. I know uh, we've had a lot, and it's good to have a lot. Uh, you want to go to church with something happening there, amen? You don't want to be where ain't nothing happening there, amen, amen, amen. I'm trying to remember, you said you had a cousin. Is he here? Uh, uh, Brother Michael, uh, Michael, someone from Chicago was supposed to be here. Uh, amen. Is he, he's, is he here? He's not here? Okay, all right, all right. I just want to make sure we want to recognize any visitors and any visitor ministers that are here as well. All right, um, a couple of wedding anniversaries and, and happy birthdays. We want to give our shout outs real quick to those. Uh, I want to say happy birthday uh, today to Sister Terry Howard. Amen. Happy birthday to you and Jazz Buchanan. Their birthday is actually today. So happy birthday to them, uh, and then Sister Sylvia Blanche, amen, her birthday is coming up, and then also Sister Bethany Bonner, who turned, I ain't gonna say your age, but Bethany, happy birthday to Bethany, I was about to do it, your mama put it on there, but happy birthday to Bethany as well, and then uh, Carissa Clark, happy birthday, where's Carissa Clark at, amen, happy birthday to her from mama, and then I uh, wanna say, to little Tatum Rogers, who won first place in the Zeta Phi Beta Night of Excellence. Is he in here? Amen. So congratulations to him. And then uh, happy anniversary to a couple of folks. Uh, Courtney and Demarcus DeBose, six years. Boy, I remember putting y'all together. Amen. Y'all stand up and wave your hand. Amen. Lovely couple back there. Amen. Amen. So happy anniversary to them. And then Doris and Hollis Green, 26 years. Stand up, Dor all right, Hollis, Doris, raise your hand. Wave me in the L. Oh, you did like this, uh-uh, okay. For well, 26 years. And then we're grateful to have Rashad William, who's back at home. Rashad, you here, who's, who been who's been serving our country, and we're grateful for him. Where's Rashad, is he's here? Uh, he's back home. Uh, Mom wanted us to just to recognize, there he is, okay, Rashad, amen. Thank you for serving our country. And we appreciate all of those, and we're still praying for Brother Brian Price, who's out of the country, and others that are serving. All right, all right. Did I get everyone? If not, I apologize uh, for that, but need to get right into the word. Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 44. Hadn't it been awesome, y'all? Hadn't it been awesome? And then we want to be praying for the Northeast color guard amen indoor color guard gary bell i forgot to do that but praying for them as they're traveling on on today and so lifting up them as well amen and then i made a note when praying for brother gerald smith a man who lost his mom we want to be praying for brother gerald smith and then we have some thank you cards here from sister aura snow and we're still praying for her in the passing of her sister and brother anthony key in the passing of his aunt and then also from Miss Tina Harris in the passing of our father. And so we're still lifting up that entire family as, as well. And so, and all those as well. And then uh, Ilea birthday is on Friday and she'll be six years old. All right. And so happy birthday to her as well. Luke chapter 19, beginning at the 11th verse, you find these words recorded therein as we stand in honor of God's word and says, and as they heard these things, he added, 
and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He says, am I in the right verse? And certainly, okay, and certainly the nobleman went into a far country and he received himself. That ain't where I want to be yet. Go to verse 29, I'm sorry. Verse 29. I said, no, that ain't it. That's what you do when you rush in the morning. And it came to pass that when he was nigh, come nigh to Bethpage, Bethany, and in the mount called of Mount Olives, he sent two of his disciples, go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied whereon, yet never man sat loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus, say, thus shall ye say unto him, because the Lord have need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he had said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners thereof said unto them, why loose ye the coat? And they said, the Lord have need of him. And they brought him to Jerusalem, brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the coat. And they set Jesus thereon. And, he, and as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even now, at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciple. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. And when he was come near and he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in thy, thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, and thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and encompass thee round, and keep thee in, on every side, and shall lay there even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And he answered and said, I tell you that these should hold their peace. The stones would immediately cry out. I want to speak to you a little while from this subject. What is the reason for your praise? What is the reason for your praise? Ushers, you may be seated, and we certainly thank you for your duty. Why are you here this morning? Think about it. Why do you spend your time on, on Sunday, after Sunday, coming to church, when you know that you had to go back to work on, on Monday or go to school on Monday? Why do you spend every weekend knowing that you only got two days before you got to go back and start your week all over again? You get up and you rush to church after all your Friday and Saturday activities. Come out to the house of the Lord. To hear songs that don't move you. Prayers that seemingly don't reach you. And a long-winded preacher that can't change you. Why do you spend your time around people that you claim you know and don't know? and act as if you love them as brothers and sisters in Christ. Why 
Do you do that? Act as if you are in a worship experience, feeling what everybody else feels when you realize that you believe deep down inside that you have no reason to pray. What's your reason for praising God? Are you just going through the motions Really, do you feel something down on the inside? I'm grateful for what we have been experiencing here lately. And I want to plug the prayer ministry for giving us an exercise to use this 21 days of dangerous prayers that have allowed us to unify as a collective body to pray and to read and to write uh, concerning what we believe God is saying to us. It's interesting that such is that you read a passage and then you answer questions. And one of the questions is, who do you need to pray for today? What are you thankful for? As believers, especially those who are trusting in God and are, are, are excited about how God has moved in their lives and they're appreciative of the fact of the things that God has done that they should have a great deal to write about to be thankful for. And truth be told, we all are standing in need of something or we know someone who's standing in need of. And so what we are doing is what we should be doing is being intentional about our efforts. It's been through divine providential that we're doing this and it's been our motivation to say what God has given us as we look at our theme for this entire year about doing more in 24. And the only way that we can do that, we must be intentional about everything that we are involved in. And that's including about our praise. Well, I done got your attention that you're looking at me kind of strange. So I might as well dig into the passage of this familiar passage of today that where we do each and every year, we celebrate what we call Palm Sunday. Sunday uh, that Jesus came into Jerusalem and that Jesus who extends to us another presentation through scripture of the value he should be to all of us. I want you to come on Wednesday night because there's something that we've been talking about even on Wednesday night as we look at being intentional and even seeing what Christ is as we look at John chapter 17 as well as looking at Hebrew chapter 4 as Jesus being the high priest for us that he brings value to us that we should know uh, that he's more than anything else the world could offer and because he is more than anything the world can offer to us then we shouldn't have to search real hard we shouldn't have to look real deep but it ought to be obvious to us of all of what he has already done if you've been saved and if you talk to the lord late in the midnight hour then you know his value if you're saved and you've been in situations that you know you couldn't get yourself out on your own accord, then you ought to know that you see his value. If he's blessed your life and have changed some situations uh, that where you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you ought to see his value value if you've been sick in your body and showed up that's been my testimony that he's able to heal your body of any matter of sickness then you know his value if he's covered your family in and out everywhere they've gone watched over your children when you know you couldn't watch over them all by yourself when you see him do and you see him make ways when you see him have fixed up things that you know nobody but a good God that sits high but yet look low I wish I could have caught at least five more y'all but whatever he's done in your life you ought to be able to find some value but we learn that he's that great high priest who understands everything that you experience and yet he's able because of the value of who he is is that he's sitting at the right hand of the father 
interceding on your behalf. But prior to him going up to heaven, but prior to him going up that hill called Calvary, the Bible lets us know, we read some of it in your hearing, uh, that Jesus was now about to do something that he has been hidden from many for such a long time. There were those that had their curiosity. Even as you saw it being illustrated through uh, the actors that there were those who did not want him to get any more popular than what he had already become. That they did all that they could and yet Jesus was able to elude them and they could not find him many times because of his ability of knowing where to be and what to do. Therefore, he is now about to make a public introduction to those who have been wondering who he was. And with Jesus, many times when he healed somebody, he would tell them, don't tell nobody because my hour has not come. But now Jesus' hour has come. To be able to perform what prophecy had said would happen. Jesus sends his disciples out and tell them to find a coat that no man has rolled upon. Bring him to me, and if anyone asks, tell them the master have need of thee. Jesus would make his triumphant entry as king of kings and lord of lords. People have come to this Galilean area. Two million believed to have come to celebrate the Passover. But yet there were those who were of knowledge of this Jesus of Nazareth who had failed the the multitudes in the desert, who had healed certain people of certain diseases and had cast out certain demons. And crowds of people had been whispering about this Jesus of Nazareth and their desire because of those who did not no longer want to be under Roman rule, figured that they could now find someone that could galvanize them to be able to take and overthrow the Roman kingdom they would use Jesus as this opportunity to become their king and lead them to victory over the Roman government and so as he came in on this coat many were throwing down their coats crying Hosanna in the highest and what's interesting that when we look through the gospels and we See what's transpiring on this road at this bottom of the hill of Calvary, of the place of Mount Olive, that where we find that this big celebration was taking place among people who were praising and didn't even know the reason for their praise. Some, and that's why we must be careful as it relates to our knowledge of who God is and what he has done, that we're not just going through the motion of praising because somebody told you to praise, to lift up your hand because somebody told you to lift up your hand, to shout because somebody told you to shout, or to do it because you see somebody else is doing. But when you have a real relationship with him that you don't need anyone to prime push or pull you out to get you to praise God something just happened something comes over you something gets down as I hear somebody say in your son nah, nah, and allow you to open up your mouth because when you realize that a good God has been good to you and when you think about where you've been and how he washed your life and cleaned your life and straightened your life and changed your life and healed your life of sin you cannot help yourself something spontaneous happened in the inside and before you know it you done open up your mouth you done lift up your hands you've jumped up on your feet 
you've took out running because you feel the joy in the inside of a God that has blessed you. What's the reason for your praise? And here's the thing is that what I grabbed hold of is that many in the crowd were sincere. But sincerity shouldn't be the only thing that you praise God for. Because when you are sincere about it, yes, I, I believe folks that, that they're really trying to do what they're doing and they're sincere about it. But I've heard somebody say that you can be sincere and you can be sincerely wrong. Because they were crying Hosanna in the highest. I heard preachers say that Hosanna has been translated into the New Testament, but it really was a cry of help. Uh, uh, but you're saying it's saying Hosanna in the highest. Help save us. That's what they're saying. Help save us. Somebody heard it over here. You know how our folks is. You see somebody take off running. You don't ask no questions. Come on, talk back if you will. If somebody running, you can ask questions once you get to a safe and a secure, secure place. Amen, somebody. Amen. That we, we can get caught up because somebody else is doing it. And so you're sincere about it. So since that praise, and I guess I need to act like the Romans, and when I'm in Rome, if they praise, and I praise, if they lift up their hand, I don't want to seem to be the odd man out. I'll do what the crowd is doing. And so we should allow sincerity to be the only thing. But we ought to be, let your praise come out of a seriousness. That sincerity and seriousness is within it. Is that you need to be for real. You ain't got time to be trying to convince me that you got something. Or convince your neighbor that you got something. Or to get people to believe that you're holier than thou. I'm sorry, my name is Jeff, but not Jesus. And I have no heaven, no hell to put you in. And so don't spend your time trying to convince the preacher of your seriousness. God knows your heart. God sees what you do. God knows everything about you. Stop trying to convince people, but be serious about your praise. And praise is just not you open up your mouth and running around. You praise God with your finances. You praise God the way you act among people. You praise God or how you work on your job. You praise God how you drive your car, what you do around when ain't nobody else is looking. That's how you really show you're serious. Because if you only shout in the church house, then I question your religion. The only time you run when God, when you're in the church house, then I question your relationship. If the only time that you open up and say, thank you, Jesus, is only when you're in the house of the Lord, but you ought to be able to be so serious about your relationship, you can be in the middle of the grocery store and realize you got enough money to pay for those pinto beans or those greens and neck bones, then you say, Lord, I thank you. That you gave me the ability to pay in the midst of all that's going on. You can praise God right at the gas station. When you know gas is so high that you can say, Lord, I thank you. That you got put me able to put gas in my car. That you labor God to give me a car to drive. Is anybody serious? About your praise. Because if your shout is only in the church house, if your praise is only in the church house, then you need to ask yourself, why is it that only when I'm in the church house? Then I tell God, thank you. Oh, I'm getting a little happy because even when I'm driving down the road, I can be listening to my music and all of a sudden something get all down in my spirit. And before you know it, I better keep my hand on the steering wheel. Tears running down my eyes and I can just praise them all by myself. I don't need nobody all around me. I have my best praise party all by my. Here it is. Here it is. Let me get out of your way. Because if you're serious about it, then 
as Jesus is doing, your praise will be a proclamation. Jesus is letting the world know. He's making a announcement and he's leaving anyone that believe that he's anything other than what they, he's saying he is. He's letting them know without a shadow of a doubt, I am the Messiah, the son of the living God. That I'm ready to make a proclamation because it's going to move me to what my destiny for me to come to do for the entire world and that's to die for their sins and that I'm making a public proclamation whether people believe me or not. It don't matter whether you believe me or not. I do want to live my life that where you can see God in my life. But whether you believe me or not, it ain't for you to be able to determine that. Because he says, confess with my mouth. That's what you got to do. Then you got to, that's a proclamation. I'm confessing with my mouth. That's what they did in that water. That's why I asked them again, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried in the grave and rose on the third day with all power in his hand. Let me back up big when I talked about the sincerity. Because here's the thing you need to realize is that you can walk around and have a zeal of God. But it might not be according to your knowledge of him. That, that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 10. That his concern for Israel is that they might be saved. They have a zeal. They sincere about it. Some folks are so religious, you can't save them. They, they, and Shannon and I were talking about this, sometimes that people have got caught up on what other folks have said and have deep convictions about what they've been taught and that teaching was wrong. And you can show them in the Bible and they won't even believe the Bible over what they've been taught. And they have such a zeal for it. That they, the Greek word zealous, they are so zealous about it, meaning uh, that they believe that they are so, uh, they believe uh, uh, that in a, such a way that they've embraced it with such a fervor and spirit that you can't break that spirit. But if your proclamation to him is going to be about something, let it be about the truth. Let me tell you that it ain't how many times you jump up and run around. Folks will tell you it ain't how you jump when you shout. It's how straight you walk when you land. It ain't how big your Bible is. It's not how many dresses you put on, whether it's up to your knees or down to your ankles. But it's about a true change that has come into your heart that even when you eat as many of us we ain't got it right yet but yet we're trying to get it right and because of the conviction that have entered into your heart that when you mess up there's a holy spirit that's trying to pull you back to tell you let's try this all over again you ain't got to keep coming to the altar and you ain't got to keep keeping getting baptized what you need to do is, is make sure you get deep in his word and begin to put parameters around you because of, I'm, I'm going too far. What's the reason for your praise? Let it be a proclamation, but let the reason be personal. Let, let, it, let it be, be personal. That there was some in the crowd crying, Hosanna. And the Pharisees said, look, y'all be quiet. Hush them up. Now, if God done something for you,
and it's personal and it means something to me and it was something that I had been asking for and it shows up and it does what I need for it to do and it fixes whatever it is I need to have fixed or it heals something I need it heal it or it bring back somebody that I've been waiting on to come come back if it turns something around that has been turned around that ain't something I just lacks a days and walk back I take that thing and because I take it personal that you can't change the praise that I have for a God that has done something. See, y'all, 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 miss, hold on, hold on. Tree sing that song. I got a blessing with my name on that. I, I live in 6297 Acre Lane, and the mail come with my name on it. No, nobody else can open up my mail, but matter of fact, I only let nobody go to the mailbox, but because I want to look at my mail. If God sent me something with my name on it, let me open it. Let me have it. It's and one good thing, can't nobody take it from you. Can't nobody stop it from coming. Can't no, and so my praise, and when I shout, I look at what the Lord has done for, for me, and that causes me to have my personal praise. Your praise may be a run. Your praise may be a wave. Your praise may be a shout. Your praise may be a cheer. Your praise may be something. But whatever your praise is, make it personal. Don't copy my shout. Don't copy my run. But have your own praise. Whatever it is, make it personal. Jesus proves to us Whatever it is that God has for you. Notice what he did when he sent the disciples out and he tells them, look, there is a coat that's there that no one has ridden upon. He said, look, that coat was personally made for me. Nobody else has sat on it. And so that's, my, that's how God can do for you. Be specific, y'all. Be dangerous in your prayers. Ask God to do something personally for you that exceeds your mind and your thoughts. My scripture is Ephesians 3 and 20 that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Get dangerous. Have the faith that believe that what you ask for, God can give it to you. Make, 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 make it, make it personal. But then, Jesus is about to do something that nobody else could have done. He rides upon a coat that nobody else could ride on. He comes, according with Zechariah 9 and 9 said, he comes in just as prophecy has declared. He's being praised by folks that knowingly and unknowingly know who he is. But yet it does not change the fact that he must do what needs to be done because his hour has come. And so as people are laying coats out on the ground, palm trees, and crying out, Hosanna in the highest. That was on that day. But we know Next week comes a Friday. Not the same crowd, but a different crowd. It's not going to be shouting Hosanna, but they're going to be shouting crucify him. Here, here's what I want you to understand. And see, that's why I said that your praise should not be connected to whatever it is you're experiencing. If you can't be happy for when God is moving in your life and you have not received what he, he has delayed for you, then your praise is conditional. Hmm. 
And so if you're going to have a reason for praise, let your reasoning of praise be perpetual. Meaning that it never stops. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wrote that and I said, hey, are they going to get that? Your praise ought to be a perpetual praise. David help us says, I will bless Psalm 34. Where he says, I will bless I will bless the Lord I thought I was in the Baptist church. I will bless the Lord and, and his shall continually be in my my, my soul shall make her boast in my mouth. The humble shall hear and be glad. And oh, let us, I, I'm through, let us magnify. That, that, that means, look, you remember back in the day when you were at the club and they blinked the lights and they were telling you you had to get out, but you want to do one more dance. You want to drink one more drink. You want to do one more thing. You didn't want to leave because you were having such a good time as a matter of fact is that you were excited about it. even when you got to the club you were dancing on the parking lot you were dancing while you were waiting in line you were dancing while you were going to your seat and they couldn't get you off the dance floor why because you had something on the inside of enjoyment that you were glad to be able to be in the place and that there was a perpetual nature about you that you didn't even want even when you were driving home you were still singing the songs that you were singing inside the club the next day you were telling somebody child that they played my jam and we got up and we did this and we did that. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. You wanted to keep on and then you'll say, I can't wait till next weekend to go back and do what you did all over again because you got something out of what you're doing. Look, let me tell you, you know how it was. Some of y'all got drunk and you can't even remember what happened. Some of y'all got high and you got too high that you couldn't even have no fun. Some of you got around some folks that got you in some more stuff after you laid the play. But let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you about my Lord. And that I want to praise him early in the morning. I want to praise him in the middle of the day. Because the songwriter said praise is what I do when I think of the goodness of Jesus and how he came down through 42 generations died on the rugged cross buried in the grave but early I wish I had a praying church early oh early on a Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand that means in my sick days I gotta praise in my well days, I got a praise. When I'm in hardship or in sorrow, I still got a praise. When I'm down, I got a praise. When I'm up, I got a praise. When folks don't like me, I still got a praise. When folks like me, I got a praise. When things are going well or when things going bad, I've got a praise I don't know about you but when I know that it was God by my side in my ups in my downs in my sickness in my sadness he's been there all of the time praise him praise him I will bless the Lord at all times if you want to feel better, praise his name. If you're tired of being sick and tired, praise his name. When folks don't like you, praise his name. Cause praise is what I do. I lift up my hands. I open up my mouth because the Bible says, let the redeemed said so. Anybody glad that they've been redeemed? Anybody bad? They've been washed in the blood of the lamb palm sunday first sunday second sunday third sunday fourth sunday and even fifth sunday it don't matter monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday i'll praise him will you help me praise his name i'm not talking about me but I'm talking about the King of Kings, 
Lord of Lord, that the Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. Y'all looking at me strange. It don't matter. I'm going to jump for Jesus. I can't keep it to myself. He's been good. 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 In the morning, he's been good. In the middle of the day, he's been good. Say yeah. 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 Oh 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 yeah. Yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Yes he is. Been sick. God will heal your body. You don't understand. It's been hard. It's been tough. But God has been by my side. He talks with me. He walks with me. He helps me. He keeps me. He bless me. I can't help myself. I will. I will. I will. Some of y'all say, it don't take all of that. But Jesus said, if you don't praise him, if you don't thank him, if you don't rejoice in him, he said, the rocks will cry out. I don't need no rock crying out for me. When I look back over my life, see how far he brought me. I don't need nobody, nobody. I can say it all by myself. Can I say it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, yay! What's your reason? What's your reason? I want to proclaim him as my Lord and Savior. I got a personal reason. I want to praise him. I got a perpetual reason. I want to praise him. David praised him so hard that he danced out of his clothes. And they were embarrassed about his praise. But when he realized, after they had lost the Ark of the Covenant, and they were able to recover it from Old Ben Edom house, and being to bring it back to the holy city to recover the word, David said, I can't let them do it all by themselves. I know I got position. I know I'm the king. But I wouldn't be king. I wouldn't be here if he wouldn't have protected me all those days when I was on the run. And whether you like it or whether you believe that's too much, it don't matter to me because praise is what I do. The doors of the church is open. The door of God's house open. What's your reason? Anybody thankful for the fact that he saved your soul? That he made you, made you whole? Anybody glad that he took your sins and my sins upon a hill called Calvary? 
It was there. The Bible says we're talking about it Wednesday night. That the veil, after he died, it said the veil and the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. It gave us all access to him, that you can come to him anytime you need him. That's enough to shout about. Because you don't need no priest to go in and talk to God on your behalf. But you can tell what you need to God yourself. That's good news. Because they may leave some out. Or you may think of something. Had you been praying and you say, oh, Lord, let me, let me tell you about this. And before you get up, say, oh, yeah, Lord, let me tell you about this. And, and then you may be walking out and you say, oh, Lord, let me come back and tell you about this. Well, you know, if you keep bugging somebody and keep calling back, you say, excuse me, I hate to bother you. I know all this, but I forgot to tell you this. And after a while, it may be a problem. But I heard my grandma say, he said, his line is never busy. Say, so you can call him early in the morning. You can call him late at night. And you can call him anytime you need him. And he'll answer right on time. I'm glad that I have that access. And because of that, that gives me a desire to have this perpetual praise on my lips. That even in the middle of going through, I still say, God, thank you. But can't can somebody testify? Things may not be like you want to be, but it can be a whole lot worse. That you can look somebody right next to you and realize, child, you, you ought to just look and say, child, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the stuff I've gone through. You, you don't know the mess I've been in and out of. You, you don't know the issues that I had, but look at God. You, you looking at me right now, I may be dressed up, got this suit on, got these clothes on, and I may smell pretty good, but I've been in some low down, dirty places, but God will, he'll fix you up. And because he'll fix you up, praise is what I just got to do. Excuse me for just a few minutes because I feel a spontaneous praise erupting in this place. I, I feel his presence moving up in this place. And if you got a praise and you ain't standing all day, you ought to help us and say praise is what I do. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You just came to church to be a spectator? You ought to come and be a participator. You ought to let somebody know that what you have down on the inside is what? Oh, help me out, man. Come on. Come on, let's make one big choir up in here. Let's make, you ought to look at somebody. What you doing ain't praise is what you got inside of you. Praise is what I do. Church on. The doors of the church is open. Come on out here, brother man. Come on, come on. If you need to come to Jesus, then come right now.
Father God, we come and we're grateful to you for allowing your word to go forth. We pray that those who heard may be encouraged and strengthened to know the reason why they praise. We all have our personal reasons and personal relationship with you. And because of that, we find ourselves in perpetual praise that it doesn't have to be in the seats of a sanctuary, but it can be anywhere at any time that what we praise your holy name. God, we thank you. We see there's none, but yet there's still room at the cross. Cover and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. We do thank God again and for his word, and we thank God for his people. Amen. At this time, at this time, we want all of those who have finished our fifth class and those who were baptized, will you would come down, please, all those who were a part of the fifth class and then those who were baptized on this morning, will you come down, please? Amen. This is an awesome visual. If you would stand and face the audience, amen. We're thankful. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Amen. Wow. I am. As my good buddy who would say, I am hyena happy and peacock proud. And, and he said hippo happy and, and giraffe great. Amen. Just to see. Wow, 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 wow. This, this is awesome. This is awesome. Now, yet God is still adding. I, I think what we said, and if you missed it, uh, last year we baptized 41, and now we're up to 31. Amen. The goal is, is to baptize more this year than we did last year, and my goal is to double that amount in order for us to do that. And we can't do more. How you do it? By encourage folks, by witness to people, by getting them to come and be a part of the church. Who do we have? Kenzie. Raise your hand, Kenzie. All right. Amen. Will you All right. <laughs> Kylie. That's you, Kylie. Amen. Amina, right here. Kelton. Uh, where's Kelton? At? Okay, there it is. All right. There you go. All right. Tania. Right there. That's right. Cassie. You said Cassidy? Where's Cassidy? Around here. All right. I got him. Brother Cassidy. 
Meet me halfway. Come on. Jemiah. Golly. Jemiah. Where's she at? Okay. What did you say? Jer- oh, no. Jeremiah. That's what she said. I'm like, that ain't on that. Sarah. Where's Sarah at? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make sure I get it right. Jamari. I got you this time. Amen. I be, I'm, I'm sorry, Jamari. Jay Sean. That's it. That's right. Y'all, I'm old now. I be these names, you know what I'm saying? Demaria, yeah. I remember her. Kai, they're right here. All right. That's all right. That's all right. These are all the ones we baptized, all right? All right. As pastor, give me your right hand. As pastor of Brown, ba- I mean, a White Hill, a White Hill Missionary Baptist Church. I'm giving you all rights and privileges of any other member here at this church. And we're thankful to God that you are part of this ministry. And we're looking forward to what God is going to do and what he has done. This is a beautiful sight to see. This is what it's all about. Because what, we're, we're, what kind of church are we? We are a worshiping and welcoming and working congregation committed to the people and the praise of the Almighty. Now, with your perpetual praise in your lips, won't you just say, Lord, thank you for, for what he's done. Amen. God bless you. Go back to your seat. All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Wow. Amen. We do appreciate all of you. And then all of our guests that are sharing with us, if you're not a member of White Hill, and you're sharing with us this morning. Will you please stand? We want to recognize all of our guests. If you're not a member of White Hill and you're sharing with us this morning, will you please stand? We just want to show some love for appreciation to you for coming and being a part of this worship experience. We pray that you are blessed by the service. And anytime you're in this area, please feel free to come back and worship with us again. A fretful expression will not practice today. They will practice Tuesday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. The True Divas Luncheon is today at 1 p.m. Please see Sister Michelle Johnson and Sinead Shoemaker if you have any questions. Now, this week, this is the week we're trying to put our puzzle together. I hope y'all keeping y'all pieces. Amen. Do you still have your piece? Please look for it. Amen. And that you can bring and put the puzzle together. We're going to try to start the puzzle before we have some that were left over. If you didn't get one, you still can get one today. We're asking that you would put your initial. If you can write your name on it, you can put it on the back of it. This is for all the members of the church. We'll begin Wednesday at 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then if we'll open it back up uh, after 12 at 5 p.m. for you to come back in. And then Friday, the same time, 9 a.m. to 12. And then at 5 p.m. right before the, uh, right before the play, you can put it together. And then Saturday... You can come out here from 9 to 12. It'll be in room 102 is where we're putting together. I'm looking forward uh, to us putting together. I uh, showed you last week is a picture of the church. So I believe if we can put the pieces of the church together, then we can come together. Amen. And so that's just a visual of unity and people doing their, their part. And so the Easter produ- production, believe, is on Good Friday at 6.30 p.m. The Easter egg hunt is Saturday, March the 30th. At 9.30 a.m., uh, today is the last day to pay your, your cost of $5. Uh, they're going out uh, to the skating rink uh, to do that particular Easter egg hunt. We had a great time last year with them, and we're looking forward again. And then on Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Sunday will begin at 8 a.m. prayer meeting, prayer service. And then, because we don't got that on the paper, but 8 a.m. is the prayer service. And then 9 a.m., we begin in here and then we'll just flow right into the morning worship. And so we want to be sure that all of you understand, if you get here at 10, church gonna be halfway over, amen. So come at 9 a.m. Did I get everything? Amen. All right, well, God bless you, let's all stand. Let's thank these men one more time, one more time for singing all week. Thank you, Minister Josh Miles, appreciate all of you. Uh, I'm hearing some background. Turn the mics off in the choir, y'all, because I'm, I'm, I'm picking it up. Amen. Mute the mics in the choir. All right. And so we appreciate them singing all week long. Next week, I think our young people are singing. And we just, now, choir, y'all need to get ready. Y'all need to get ready. Choir, get ready. Come to rehearsal. All right. Good seeing you, Nicole. Amen. I know this ain't the part of how, but we're doing the best we can. Amen. All right. Father God, we thank you right now. We appreciate you.
for who you are and all that you've done, God. We pray and we lift up all names. And even now we're praying uh, for Brother Williams as well as praying for the sister of Miss Beatrice Buchanan. God, whatever's going on, God, we believe in your divine healing. We believe, God, that there is power in your, your name. And then, God, we pray, God, that you will do a great work in all of us. Lord, that we can be used to praise your holy name. Now, God, as we leave this place, we pray we never leave your presence. And now, God, we, may, we pray that the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may rest, may rule and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. Amen. Pause for one second. Pause for one second. I did forget two things. Uh, today, the Blueprint small group session is on via Zoom, 6 p.m. tonight. And so that Blueprint Good group is taking off. And so we want to support those. Those are part of that age group. And then uh, I just want to say congratulations to two of our Mississippi women, history, in history, the luncheon was, uh, uh, was given, and they were for outstanding community service, Miss Patty Tucker, amen, uh, amen, who received a reward. What, Miss Patty, yeah, raise your hand. So congratulations to her. I apologize. And so we thank God for her. Did I get everybody? And who else? And Miss Pam Hadley, amen. Thank you. And Shirley Hendricks. All right. I told you, I apologize. Charge it to my head, not to my heart. But these great women do great work in our community. I know I always see Pam and Miss Shirley and Miss Tucker always do great work. Congratulations to you. You deserve that and many more. All right. God bless y'all. Have a wonderful day. Amen. <laughs>